So now we can build the high voltage circuit. And the components we're going to need for this are two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors, two 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, a 2.2 microfarad 400 volt capacitor, the other UF4007, a 16 megahertz crystal, a 28 pin socket for the microcontroller, a 100 microhenry inductor, a, a 3K resistor, the MOSFET wrapped in silver foil because it is slightly static sensitive, a, a 4K7 resistor, a 390K resistor, and a 10K resistor, and last but not least, the controller itself. So I normally start by I normally start by inserting the controller and its socket first of all. Now a socket can be a bit fiddly to get in, um, but it's in and it's sitting quite nicely. Just to make sure it doesn't fall out, I'm going to tape it. The old tape trick again. And now we can solder it. So I'm going to take one pin on each end just to tack the controller and take the tape off and let's make sure that the controller is seated properly so I push it in and just make sure, reflay the solder and make sure that it is um, sitting nicely. I'm going to move those components out of the way so I'm more comfortable and let us solder the remaining pins. So You should see the solder flow via capillary action onto the pads. The pads should take the solder really rather nicely. They're pre-tinned from the factory. It's rather tedious. There's 28 of the pins to solder and it takes the time that it takes. Okay, that looks good. Let us then solder in the crystal. This is the clock circuit of the controller. And just splay the pins very slightly. This shouldn't stand too far off the board. One, two. That's a nice clearance. That's worked out well. Trim off the excess leads. Make sure you always get rid of the trimmed off parts because otherwise they can disturb quite uh, badly later on. If you have to put the board down on one of them, you will destroy something. Okay. One twenty-two picofarad capacitor. Um, fiddly. Okay, and the other one. And we will tack these guys in. I'm doing just one lead of each of the capacitors first of all, because if I need to adjust them, it makes it easier, but it looks good. Okay, we can do the other lead. Trim off. So, 
We put in the other ceramic capacitors. There's C7, which goes here. These are decoupling capacitors for the controller. And C8 on the other side. I tend to trim off at every stage. That's not necessarily ne uh, the case. It doesn't have to be that way. So the electrolytic capacitor, again, here. The white stripe goes against the white stripe on the board. Make sure this is the 2.2 microfarad capacitor. If you get this wrong, you will have a nasty surprise later because one of the lower voltage capacitors will fail under the high voltage that uh, is produced. And that could be smoky or loud or both. So the inductor So let's find the UF4007, bend the leads again, match up the white stripe on the diode with the white stripe on the board. Put in the 3K resistor. So orange, black, red, and that is R10, which goes near the MOSFET here. it somewhat. I like them to sit perfectly upright. I didn't want to take the solder. Now, with the MOSFET, when you unwrap it, I'm just earthing myself just briefly to my soldering station. And then we can get the MOSFET out. They're not hugely static sensitive, but to be safe rather than sorry, they come wrapped in silver foil. Sitting up well. Trim off the other leads. It makes mounting or uh, soldering the other pads much easier because you can get in right on top of them like that. Okay. What else have we got to do? We have 
the voltage divider for the feedback loop. Now this is very, very important. We have R1, which is 390K. I don't know if you can see this. Orange, white, black, orange. This is a 1% uh, resistor. And that must go in the position of R1. Now R1 is this one, the one closest to the capacitor. If you get these the wrong way around, you will destroy your microcontroller. So 390K in R1. Seven K resistor. If you have a doubt which one is which, get a meter out and measure it. Four point seven K resistor. So yellow, violet, black, brown goes in R two. That's the one next to R one, but it's furthest away from the capacitor. Four point seven K R two. soldered component is the 10k resistor which is R30 which acts as a pull-up for the reset line of the controller and I'm having trouble finding it so R30 shout if you can see it R30 there we go R30 controller so the notch on the controller meets the notch on the socket meets the notch on the board so let us see we get a meter in shot and we're going to test the voltage from ground to 170 volts we're going to check that nothing sounds strained we're going to check that the red R LED stays on. Now be careful here. There's now 200 volts on this board, so only touch things which are insulated. So, looks good. So from ground to 170 volts. So we're getting way over 170 at the moment. That's because we're unloaded. So this is completely normal. That's why we have a 400 volt capacitor in there. So, and the controller is now adjusting the voltage down until we get to 180, 179, and then it should stop there. This will take a moment, but it's working. So we'll come back to that in a second. All nice and cool, all tranquil. Now we'll come back to that later. That's it.